Hey, it's Chris. What are you talking about today? One hit heroes. Now, don't let this aesthetic fool you. This may be one of the best games I've played so far in 2024. This is a prototype from Wiggles 3D. It's coming to crowdfunding soon. <laughs> let me tell you, you like this? You're going to like this. Let's go. Now, this is a combination of, again, this may put you off, but you need to hear this out fully through, right? Marvel United and Aeon's End. So what you're doing in this game is you take the role of an individual hero going up against a villain. And you're just, again, doing everything that both those games do in the first place, right? You just knock out the bad guy before getting knocked out yourself. Because the name of the game is Don't Get Hit. Because you have one hit. Hence, the literal name of the game. If you get hit, you lose. So you've got your bad guy in front of you. You've got your player board set out here. You get to take one of your asymmetric characters here. For this example, we've chosen Roro the Claw Robot. And again, I have six heroes with the base game here. I have Toki the Bunny Ninja, as well as Sophie the Sniper here. And then I also have two others over here. I think I skipped over two that were in that pile. Uh, Cassius, the Plague Doctor, I'm mispronouncing that probably, and Will, the Bow Slinger. One of the other ones that I started with as well was Edric, the Flame Lancer. So you take your asymmetric character here and you lay it out in your area in front of you. For example, in this card play, I've got Roro the Claw Robot. So I put my character card down here, nothing on the back, just to remind me who I am right there. And each of these characters starts with two items. You place them in the item slot. We'll talk about that in a second. The rest of the cards here make up your deck and you can see we've got about three different colors in there you've got sort of your weapons the orange in the upper left hand corner and the you know sort of reddish background you've got your sort of effects your instance if you will uh, with the purple and purple and then you've also got your reactions which are your green and then the other thing that you'll see in these cards is they all also have a symbol uh, below what it tells what type of card it is it tells whether it's a red or a green, meaning the red is a one-time burn trash, you know, forever in that game. So if I play this, it's gone, does not get recycled back in my deck. The green does, just goes to the regular discard pile. So now that you know that, that's the basic, uh, what you've got in front of you style of things. But this game, in a nutshell though, takes the elements of Marvel United, of the boss battling, and, and deck building, and the turn-by-turn -turn boss deck that you're dealing with along the way, and ramps it up because the consequences are not insignificant here. As I mentioned, if anybody in your party gets hit once you lose, it's that simple. You just go shuffle your deck, draw your cards and take your three actions from your five cards that are in your hand. You go, bad guy goes, you guy go, bad guy go back and forth right and as you can see right here i've got punch robot here the boss number one in episode one and he's got 10 of these little ones and five of the large stars and each of your weapons now is going to do different damage depending on which character you are you can see right here in the middle i have one large and two small destroy one of my items though it's a burn. Once I use that, it's gone out of my deck until that boss battle is over. Grapple, small one, take two aggro. And this is where the other thing is. You can see at the bottom of that card from other heroes. So aggro happens as you do damage to the boss. Any damage that you do to the boss, if I would have said, taken this large one, done damage here, taken one. So now he's down to eight and four respectively. Well, that just doesn't go away. That gets put in your little center row right here because what you're gonna be doing is this is your aggro. You're making the boss mad at you and you know using the video game sense to really make it kind of incorporated as a whole. And so then on the boss's turn, the boss is gonna have one of these cards face up and after every hero turn, you're gonna have a boss turn, all heroes gain three aggro. So I would gather my little stars over here, I would open them up and I would gain three more aggro. Now you can see my aggro is actually in the red. I grab my boss die next because the thing that this boss does every single time is he attacks. And, oh, automatic hit. Well, you'll also see on the other side of this dice, there's red, yellow, miss, purple, green, corresponding to all of the colors on the back of the color aggro spots. And if you roll the side of the die that correlates to at least that level, so if I rolled anything really, uh, white, which is gonna hit the hit, the green, the yellow, or the red, I have to be able to block a damage or deal with that damage 
or we lose. If I would have rolled purple or miss, I would have been safe. And so as you're mitigating or dealing with this aggro, you're gonna have cards that are gaining, losing, pushing, removing, mitigating, and all of these heroes are asymmetrically unique in how they deal with those elements. Now, the other aspect of this game that is a little bit different than both of those previously mentioned referred to games, and the reason I refer to them, Marvel United in a sense, is that this game, I just explained to you probably 90% of the actual core mechanics, right? Like with Marvel United, the core mechanic is play a card. It's got four and four symbols. How you utilize those mechanics though in this game just like Marvel United, is what makes it stand out. And that's why I'm so impressed by this game in the first place. Now, I only have the first two episodes. There's going to be at least three plus an epilogue in the game coming to crowdfunding. But each of these actually entails at least four bosses, depending on... Well, there's some slight nuance there in the second episode. Punchbot, Crate Bot, Giant Bomb, cuddles and now you're looking at these going well chris they just have different health but on the other side this is where the aeons end feature comes in they tell you how the setup is going to change as well so for example if we grab crate bot here you grab the six crate cards place two tokens on each of these cards crates are minions you defeat the minions by well, removing all their health and then though he also has an attack but his is yellow means anytime you have tokens in the yellow he attacks you and you can split damage, which is nice in this game because you can't really always do that in some of those other boss battlers that I mentioned. And then if a crate shield is destroyed, set it aside, doesn't go to your burn pile. At the end of your fight, return all the crate shields in the episode tray. They don't stay with them. So what these crate cards are here is they're basically extra items for my item slot. And if they're located on the other side, again, you can see, and these are things that are gonna get in the way and do damage, or he's gonna be able to utilize them to do damage to me. And so again, just little twists like that without changing the core formula of things. So going back to that here, let me just show you a sample turn, right? Let's say I shuffle my cards up here. I draw my five cards. Okay, I've got grapple, do damage, take aggro from other heroes. Well, I've got one hero, so I'm not worried about that. That's nice, grapple, same thing, swipe. Lose an energy. Energy is the other thing that you can see cornered at the top of the bar here that you can slide back and forth that is going to be usable by your characters or, well, potentially helping other people. And then you also have the two other elements we need to talk about, right? You have these purple cards, which are more instants. If you gain an em if you have an empty item slot, gain two energy. And we'll talk about the items now and the reactions. And let me pull a reaction out so you can kind of see one. But the gist of it is that these items are ways that you're going to be blocking the damage. Because again, like if I had just taken that attack in that example I showed you, right, I would lose. Anytime you have an item in a slot, you can sacrifice an item to block a damage and it's destroyed. You'll notice that, you know, one, it just gets destroyed. But if these items get used, they are burned out, not available later on. And this says, you know, either a passive ability potentially or a one time use or even a once per turn use. Once per turn, I can spend two energy to remove four aggro from another hero. Protection module. When you block with this, you may also block for another hero at the same time. So that thing is freaking awesome. You know, if most of us get hit in a two-player game, I can sacrifice my item card here, block for both of us. The other person doesn't have to worry about losing one of their items because these item cards may sound trivial at first, but they are the core mechanic of what makes these characters run in terms of building their engine and making their engine really run as smoothly with the other cards asymmetrically that you've been given in your you know deck in the first place. Now, that leads me to the other way to mitigate, and that are these green cards. For example, again, another burn card, but Tactical Retreat. Play on the boss's turn, and you'll have cards that can be played on other people's turns, boss's turns, or when they're potentially on your turns. And so these reactions are basically other ways to mitigate. If the attack die is green, change it to miss. So meaning if you have a low amount of aggro and somehow it still rolls green on this die, the one out of six chance, this is going to give you a way to get out of jail for free by burning this and playing it. So again, you have a lot of ways to mitigate. And so I would take my five cards here. I would say, what do I want to do? I've got my two items once per turn. Well, I don't have two energy. So I, you know, I can lose energy here. Well, this is a great card to play at the beginning swipe because I don't have any energy to lose. So I grab one of these guys, I take the aggro. And then, you know what? Um, you know what? I want to get rid of the big ones because, again, you have cards that are very specific for getting rid of the big energy pieces and the small energy pieces. But when you're setting them in there, it's less important. And so then I have one potential turn left here. Um, if I have an empty item slot, I don't. And then, you know what? I'll just take the last aggro from here. So now I've got him whittled down to three and nine. 
So then all heroes would gain three aggro. One, two, three. I draw back up to my hand size of five. So now I'm back up here. So in case, uh, you know, I hadn't, you know, and so drawing up is important though before the enemy goes because it's going to allow you to refill and have more mitigation. If you were left with just those two cards, this game would be even more difficult than it is. And believe me, it's hard. So then I gain that three aggro. So then you flip up the next one and you can kind of get a sense of, okay, what's going to happen. Uh, but then I know that this attack actually happens too. So I'd roll. Now this attack though is a little bit different because in this game, I believe that this attack, if I'm remembering correctly, it depends. If it's a blue, it attacks every single time. With Punch Bot here, since it's red and it's got a red die, meaning if somebody has aggro in the red, I would have to roll the die. And so then I did roll the dry and I got red here, for example. So I would have to figure out, do I have a reaction card? Well, I didn't roll green, can't do that. Don't have any other cards here. So I'm gonna have to sacrifice this. You know what, strategy module, boom, it's gone, it's burned, it's out. Uh, these will put make this my discard pile here. And so then I know that he's gonna attack next time, roll the boss die, all heroes and with tokens in that color of their aggro bar get hit. And so you're going to go back and forth and do this. And he's got a deck right here, three, four, five, six. And it tells you a little bit at the bottom here, second wind, jab, amp up, one, two punch. And you're going to be getting a little bit of what to expect as well as you go along. And so then I can say, okay, well, destroy one of my items. Do I really want to do that? Overwhelm. Uh, spend energy to play an item from my burn pile. Well, do I have energy? I don't have energy. So you need ways to get energy. And so if you have an empty item slot, gain two energy. So there we go. Get two energy right there. Then spend one energy. Do that. Gain an item from my burn pile. Boom. Back in there. Uh, now, unfortunately, this says very specifically to remove from another hero. And that's important because they really do differentiate what you're going to be doing here. So I, if you're playing along at home, I played two of these cards. And so I have one more card left that I could play here. Um, I don't really want to grab more aggro, but you know what? Let's just do the overwhelm for the sake of this example. So I get one more of these and two more of these. And now you can see, basically, unless I roll a miss, I have to block two potential attacks this turn, even though I've got him down now to two of the big ones and three, seven of the small ones. So then, okay, I'm out of cards in my deck here. Um, and you know, this one is the only one I can draw. So I'm back up to three. Then you take what's left. Actually, this one got burned too. So now I only have four cards in my discard pile. I shuffle those back up and I need to draw two of them back into my hand. And there you go. So then bad guy's gonna go, he's gonna attack twice. And so uh, I'd roll green, roll miss actually. So again, strategy module blocks that one attack, then flip this up. So I know what's kind of coming up here, restore two. So he's gonna restore two health on his turn, but can't have higher than its original health. So then, okay, what do I have left here in my hand? Um, okay, so I don't want to lose that energy yet. I need to spend it potentially. Uh, let's get, let's get, actually, you know, this is going to be just a blocking back and forth, back and forth here. So if I have an empty slot, gain two energy. So put that there, gain two energy, I'm up to three, which is my maximum. Then we are going to play this one to spend an energy, actually, uh, to grab the strategy module back in there. And that is my second card. And then my third card will be, again, will, um, well, he's going to grapple this back up to nine. Uh, so we'll have him get blasted here. And I just don't have to take that aggro because I'm full. So then he restores two of the small ones back to his health. So he's at one and nine. And then I redraw actually before he attacks. And I will shuffle this back up. Again, only one card in my discard pile now. And then roll here. So purple, I would have to block again, use this, burn it. Um, so then we're back here. So you can kind of see the dynamic that's going on here. And this guy's not very good to be soloing, right? Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble and I would have lost energy. So I'm at two there. Uh, but you're kind of seeing how this goes now. Uh, I could take out his last big energy. And then I could play two of these small ones to be down here. And now he is down to zero and seven. Um, draw this back up, shuffle these, draw two there, okay, um, I should have flipped that up earlier, attacking twice now, this is where it's trouble, miss, and hit, so hit, I'm just gonna, protection module, and now you can kind of see I'm in trouble, and so this should be face up, you kind of do that face up, all heroes gain three aggro, so now you can see, okay, is this gonna be a rush, now, 
The problem is two of my cards here are the large ones and I don't have any large do to do damage. And so I only have that one, which is only going to bring him down to six. And these other cards are not going to be that helpful. Uh, so this is kind of a miss as a whole. And this is kind of the other thing I'm not quite sure on in this game is that I'm not sure I can discard for free if I wanted to cycle through. I think so. And you would definitely want to do it with this hand because I want this other grapple that I do not have access to for my next hand. So this one doesn't really do me a whole lot of good. So then I would draw this back up, potentially assuming that's the case. I could be screwing that up as well. So then grabbing this one back into my hand and then he's going to gain, he's going to cause me to gain three aggro and he's going to attack and I get hit and I'm dead because I have no other way to mitigate it. So I would lose. Now, obviously with two people, it's gonna be a little bit back and forth. It's gonna be a little bit more you can help and assist other people in that dynamic. Now on the other side of things, right? Like I did this solo, just as a little side tangent here. They actually say, again, speaking back to this letter, there's a little dog helper that you can use to introduce people, like very basic mechanics as a hero. So if you have kids like I do, and you think that this might be a little overwhelming for them, they can use the dog heroes whose abilities are very straightforward, or you can use it as a companion to solo game alongside of. As you can see, this game is very tough from a solo aspect if you don't have the right combination right away and get some really good luck. So a few of those things, again, for those that are super interested. But that's the game in a nutshell right there. Now imagine five or six different heroes with asymmetric decks. And again, I've never used his deck before. So me doing it on camera here for the first time is really a different swinging feel of things. Um, for example, the other difference is right here, the Plague Doctor. The Plague Doctor is freaking awesome. He discards and just allows you to burn aggro from yourself as fast as you can build it up. The other difference here is that you're gonna notice here in this deck that I have a whole bunch of other items. He actually has four items in his deck. And look at this, This is, why does he have so many cards, Chris? Well, here's the other really kind of, well, it's a little bit of a gimmick thing, but it's kind of cool too. So when you defeat this boss, if I would have defeated Punchbot here, Punchbot comes with, let me, I pull it out here. I save them all just for the purpose of this video. They come out with their own packs and you get to, a la your old school TCGs, right? You get to open your pack. And when you open that pack, within each episode, you draft cards and you get two cards from each of these packs. And you can see that I've done them all after defeating Punchbot, after defeating Cratebot, after defeating Giant Bomb. Yeah, it just ticks down and then blows up and kills you. Uh, so then you have this set of cards that's available to you that you're drafting and throwing in your deck to mitigate and to potentiate and giving you customizable options more so than I just had. Cause you could see with that example where my deficiencies were. I needed to do more of the small damage. I needed to be able to mitigate and block more. Guess what? You can do that with those cards because they're you know set to help you succeed and fall forward a little bit, even if you didn't fail. Now, each episode has a certain number of packs and herein lies both the dilemma, the curse, as well as the cool thing, right? You can customize it however you want. You can take all of them afterwards. You can replay the episode and draft them all as an open draft so that you can just choose two every single time. And so you have a little bit more freedom. The biggest downside I'll say is that, you know, it's episodic. And so when I have episode one sitting here with sort of the factory bosses, I only get to use them within the same episode. So when I'm fighting all four of these bosses, punch bot, crate bot, giant bomb, cuddles, after that, that deck doesn't carry over with me. And so then when I go over to deck episode two here with my deck, my deck is back to that starter deck for Roro here that you just saw. And so when I fight the new West enemies, which again, there's a freaking train, right? You get to fight the whole cars of the train and you get to do that. And it's different, it's dynamic. You know, the, the heroes are tremendous, actually. I really liked, let's see, the sniper. I did the sniper and the bunny ninja two-handed for the first episode to go through these bosses and it was a heck of a lot of fun. And so that's the other blessing or curse here is that you're gonna find heroes that are just more attuned to you. But the other cool thing is that if they're not quite your taste, you can make them more to your taste. That was my issue with the Plague Doctor. The Plague Doctor actually does damage with some of his cards when you discard cards from your hand, right? As you just saw, like I wanted to discard more to get the better stuff back through and this, this guy, just does that and one of his items says every time you discard a card do a damage and grab one of these little things and take it off and they're all asymmetric so one thing i would love to see more heroes give me two or three more of these heroes and then it'd be freaking awesome and then the other thing i'd love to see and i'm not sure the epilogue they say in the little letter they sent me to talk about is that the epilogue is well similar to the episodics but it's bigger longer and tougher in terms of the bosses and let me be clear 
especially even at the higher player counts, this is not an easy game. It, just like Marvel United, it's going to be a little bit adaptable to your difficulty wants, but don't be fooled by the nature of the actual mechanisms of not having 37 pages of rulebook, right? It's not an easy game. But I'll tell you right now, this is probably, probably one of the most fun games I've played in 2024 in the first four months of this year. No, no joke. And so, like I said at the beginning, I am really, really freaking impressed with this game as a whole. One last part here I didn't show you, but you can see here on the setup that you can actually store your individual decks because if you're like me and you play campaigns and you want to keep things together, um, they actually allow you different slots for the different characters. So if you have a deck and you only play through one of the two bosses or, you know, not the whole four in the episode, then it actually gives you the ability to kind of slot them away here, keep them aside, as well as keep whatever other cards you've already gotten from those packs right here separately. So kind of actually very nice storage, surprisingly. The other thing that sort of excites me, worries me at the same time, right? At the bottom of this box, the One Hit Heroes box, it says right here, Season 1, Connor and AC. You've got an absolutely fantastic game. I won't lie to you guys and tell you that this one was super high on my radar, and I was super pumped about this one. I didn't really know what to expect, and they sent me an email, and I said, uh, okay. And then I got it, and I was like, uh, okay. And then I played it, and I was like, holy crap! <laughs> This is right up my alley. This is an absolutely smashing game. Uh, again, it may not be, mechanically speaking, for a lot of people, a top 10 game of the year. However, at the same time, this is going to be a top 10 game of the year if you just enjoy games. Because it takes familiarity, it twists it in a new direction, and it gives you adaptability. And so, if you can give me more drafting, I mean, again, like, let's talk pros and cons here, right? Are the card packs necessary? Heck no! Card packs aren't necessary whatsoever, right? You could just pull out a little envelope. You could pull out, you know, a little shrink wrap and just whatever. But it adds to the, you know, you know what it is. And, you know, the other asymmetry, it's there. I felt dramatically different. I didn't, I don't like Roro. <laughs> this is a bad one to use in the video. I should have used like the sniper or even the bow slinger. The bow slinger is totally here a glass cannon that um, I wasn't a huge fan of as well. I much preferred the sniper and the bunny ninja. Uh, I didn't get to try the, the fire lancer. I didn't do that one. I think Rado did that one in his video. Uh, so if you want to go see what that one looks like, go check that out. Um, but uh, the plague doctor was probably third there and the bow slinger is probably fourth row or you're definitely fifth. And the other pro is, I mean, this is simple, right? This is very simple. You just have your aggro, you're manipulating this, and, and that's the thing you didn't see with a two or three player character dynamic, right? Is this aggro actually gets manipulated a lot around. I take off a lot, you know, it gets slotted down a lot, you're really minimizing it a lot, and then you also have other characters that are like, the bow slinger, he's like dumping aggro to other characters. So when I had the plague doctor who was massively discharging a whole bunch of aggro off of himself, the bow slinger was just shoveling it over to the plague doctor so the plague doctor could rid of it for both of them. And it worked so, so well. And again, the bottom line of it, though, was I had a hell of a lot of fun playing it. And, you know, I play a lot of things. And you recognize technicality masterpieces when you see them. But you also recognize games that you go, a lot of people are just going to have fun with this. And they're really going to enjoy it. And that's what this game is. Because there's also tension. There is tension because it doesn't matter who is up if anyone gets hit you lose so it really is cooperative if you don't meta game and quarterback yeah it really makes you feel like you have an individual role in the team as well the other con for you euroers or heaviers well i mean yeah like you saw right you're rolling a die you're rolling a die and seeing if your color is filled up and sometimes you know what you're just gonna get screwed like you saw me there i just couldn't roll well enough at the beginning and the end and you know, I had to lose things occasionally. I didn't get a miss, even though I got a couple. And you just can't always do that. But you know what? You rinse, repeat, and go again. And the other pro, like I mentioned, is all of these bosses, just like Marvel United and Aeon's End in both those elements, right? Both of these bosses that you didn't see here as well with the giant bomb and the cuddles, they are dramatically different, right? Cuddles here, for example. When Cuddles goes, all heroes with five cards in their hand burn a card. So you know how I filled back up at the end before the bad guy went? 
I'd have to burn a card, not discard a card. I'm losing a card from my deck, meaning my deck is getting winnowed in a bad way because you're also noticing as sometimes with those hands that I'm keeping what I want to keep for the next round and he's causing me to burn one, burn one. The train and some of the other heroes over here without spoiling things totally changes up these decks as well. Minor Minutia, one of the enemies in the New West episodes here actually has a mini like card deck and what it does is it instead takes one of these cards gives you a bad condition and says here you're afflicted with this the rest of the game and every turn that you take you have to grab one and so there's about eight of them and <laughs> if you play at the two player count like i did holy cow does that become difficult so it ratchets it up in clever clever unique ways i wasn't expecting and so episode one episode two again like i want more the only problem is with some of this stuff, unlike Aeon's End, you know, there's not as much adaptability, right? Like Punchbot doesn't really get any better. So are you gonna wanna go back and play Punchbot after you've played Punchbot once or twice? Probably not. Maybe some of the other stuff, but I guess that goes maybe what into the episodic epilogue that I don't have any information about of what dynamic degree that's going to manipulate or allow for in that sense, um, because that's what it's missing for me. That's the Aeon's End changeable market as you're going along and that's the problem with these self-contained draft packets that i threw at the camera earlier right is that there's not that much even though there is very cool clever unique stuff and how it incorporates into each one of these different heroes is freaking awesome because it does you can see that cards are clearly beneficial for certain heroes but if you really have to address a weak spot because you addressed a few other things differently earlier in your drafts you can flip on a script if you need to as well so Overall, again, I am incredibly impressed. Uh, this thing has, well, overachieved in terms of what I was expecting as a whole. So, uh, yeah, you need to keep a lookout. If you're like anything in me with this taste, you are going to potentially really enjoy this one. I just, again, the only biggest criticism I have to weigh at this point is just long-term replayability. Because, again, if you're like me, uh, legacy game-esque, as I've talked about in the past, my own bias. Am I going to want to play the same villains again, even if I've got slightly different heroes? And for me, without changing or giving a little add-on, right? Like something to adapt these bad guys a little bit further, something to give them each a twist individually, right? Like a random deck of bad guy ailments, and we add one to Punchbot, or we add one to Giant Bomb. You know, and I don't know. It, it's because it's sent to be a little bit of progression between these guys too. I trust them to show us what they can do with that. So just like with Marvel United, you saw season one, season two, and now season three incorporating things. And so I imagine that they have some thoughts and some ideas on that too. So I'm excited to kind of see where it goes. So thank you, Wiggles 3D. Sending me a freaking fun game to play. One hit heroes. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. Go check it out.